Hi, I'm Kenzie Bell, <laughs> producer and co-host of McGowan Braybender's podcast channel, Side Effects. As a millennial, I never thought I would be able to say this, but we are welcoming a guest that is younger than me, Danielle Ruffalo. Age clearly does not matter when it comes to entrepreneurial talent. Danielle is not only a student athlete and senior at the University of Dayton, pursuing a double major in marketing and entrepreneurship in the business school. She is the founder and owner of her very own business. Get this, that she started as a sophomore in college. She is here today to discuss her journey with her patented business, Handy Hats. It's a genius invention that her professor encouraged her to pursue. Just two weeks ago, she was at a casting call for the popular TV show, Shark Tank and now she is sitting in our studio. You may be wondering how Danielle fits in when it comes to employee benefits. She technically doesn't, but as an entrepreneurial company, we share the same passion with Danielle. It is so exciting to work with another person who takes risks and trailblazes the way with the same entrepreneurial spirit as MB. Without further delay, let's find out what is next for this budding businesswoman. I'm Scott McGowan. I'm Kenzie Fell. And I'm Anne Marie Singleton. Now, I think even for our listeners, too, I think what's important is um, we might be right, we might be wrong, but one thing is we're not afraid. Our goal is to get you to think about things a little differently. And we're unscripted. We just have free reign for 20 minutes. Welcome to Side Effects with an A. I'm Scott McGowan. Welcome to Side Effects. Hi, I'm Kenzie Fell. How are you today? I'm good. How are you, Scott? I'm fantastic. We have a great guest with us today. A fellow flyer. I'm so excited. Yes. So, Danielle, <laughs> um, one is congratulations. Thanks for putting a dent, putting a dent in our in our community. Super grateful. Well, thank you, and thank you both for having me. So, before we start, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. Um, so, my name is Danielle Ruffalo, but everybody calls me Danny, actually. Danny. At school. Danny, yes. With an I or a Y? With an I, so it's cute. That's even yeah. better. I yeah. Like <laughs> it. <That's good. laughs> um, I'm the oldest of five kids, so I have three younger brothers and a younger sister. Um, I went to Alter High School, so I'm a Dayton local, mm -hmm. and um, I'm a senior at UD, so I'm a marketing and entrepreneurship double major, and I also played in... Well, I'm technically retired now from soccer, but I was a Division One athlete at UD and played played women's soccer there. Did you really? What carried you to, to UD? Um, so both my parents actually went to UD. So growing up, I always knew what Dayton was. I was I've always been a flyer. Um, I moved around a lot as a kid, though. So I lived in Massachusetts, Columbus, Chicago. And um, right before I started high school, we were living in Massachusetts. So I still was thinking, I want to go to UD. Like, that's the only college I've ever, like, grown up knowing. We ended up moving to Dayton, though, my freshman year of high school. And so um, I was in Dayton four years before college. And, and I loved, loved, loved the soccer team at UD. And that was always a dream of mine. So I was, I was very fortunate to be able to do that. Awesome. So l let me ask you this question before we get into what you're doing and what you created, which is really cool stuff. Tell me about your dad. My dad. Your dad. <laughs> um, I absolutely love my dad. He is my role model, as is my mom. And he's been my business advisor and, I mean, just my life advisor in, in so many things. Not only being my first coach for soccer, but um, just as I've continued to work with Handy Hats or any other project through my childhood and now as I'm, I'm 22, he will drop everything to help me be my best me and he's not easy on me but w which is what I need because I can handle it and he's g taught me to be able to take that constructive criticism to be able to be my best awesome okay now tell me about your mom <laughs> okay like I said my mom is also my role model um she is there for literally everything and again she will drop a anything and everything just to be there for me she has been a business advisor for me as well. She has more of the creative side to her than, than my dad does, and the two of them make the most amazing team, and I hope that one day I'll be able to have find a partner just like my parents. Their, their marriage is amazing, and they just I can't, I can't speak highly yeah. enough of my parents. I love them. Scott, why do you ask? Yeah, I'm curious. <laughs> no, because I think one is, um, one, what, what you've done is amazing. Um, y you have an amazing family, too, here. Thank you. Um, and the fact that, you know, I, I think a lot of times, too, a lot of it uh, is, is how we were brought up. So someone told you when you were younger that you were good enough, that you're smart enough, that you're talented enough. 
to play soccer, to be innovative, to be smart, to be bold. Because a lot of times we don't make that stuff up, up on our own. And sometimes it comes from our parents. Um, by the grace of God, sometimes it comes from our Sometimes it doesn't. Does that make sense? Yes, totally. So um, I told you I was going to ask you that question because <laughs> I didn't know the kind of that backstory. But uh, but I, but I appreciate sense. that. And, and, and <laughs> thanks for calling out uh, in such a special way, uh, your mom and dad. So like we were just um, foreshadowing, they have helped you with your business, Handy Hats. Yes. So tell us what is Handy Hats, how you got the idea for it. What the heck? How did this <laughs> genius idea was so simple and you turned it into an amazing business? So um, my sophomore year at UD, as part of the entrepreneurship program, everybody had the chance to pitch a new product idea, just like Shark Tank. So we all went up there and did our elevator pitch of whether that be a cool UD jersey or a t-shirt or um, bracelets, mugs. Um, I wanted to come up with something that was a little bit different. So as someone that was very active, someone on the women's soccer team, I'm always on, a, on my runs um, through the neighborhood or just on the go constantly. So I absolutely hated wearing a lanyard or carrying around they're a purse. They're so cool. Why did you hate it? <laughs> um, well, see, I personally think they're kind of lame <laughs> because if you wear one of those, everybody knows you're a freshman. Mm -hmm. So I'm a big, bad sophomore now. So <laughs> obviously I can't be wearing a lanyard anymore. So I was what like. What about a fanny pack? Well, I did. Those are coming back. I did. No, they're not. No, they're <laughs> they not. They are. They <laughs> are. No. Okay. Well, I actually <laughs> thought about a fanny pack and I'm like, that's so cool. But like when you're running, it's going to like bounce up and down and mm -hmm. like. Again, like it may be on trend right now, but I don't know that it's something that's always going to be trendy. Mm -hmm. um, so anyways, I still always had to have my student ID on me, my license, credit card, and dorm key. So I went back to my dorm after I was on a run that day and took one of my baseball hats that I already had, took a sock, sewed it in, said, all right, this looks like a pocket. This is a handy hat. Let's go. So <laughs> I showed my roommates. They said, yeah, that's kind of cool. I'm like, okay, well, we'll give it a shot. So the next day I, I pitched it and everybody loved it and I was kind of shocked that they loved it that much because it kind of sounds silly um but I was like you know what I'll, I'm gonna try try this and the top ideas were picked that year to be made into like a micro business and the University of Dayton is so so gracious in investing five thousand dollars into each of those teams so throughout the year we were responsible for um coming up with the design actually producing them marketing them and creating some type of I guess fan base so um, the rest of the year we, we did that. And then once the class was over, um, my professor was like, Danny, this is a really unique idea. I think you should continue on with it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, do you, do you, do you have one with you? I do. Can I see I it? I do. You may. Let me see. Oh, it's Dayton. Pretty pink yeah. Dayton. Awesome. Yeah. So that's my Dayton breast oh, okay. cancer hat. Uh, oh, your actually, stuff's in here. Yeah. So <laughs> I just showed you a little example. So it's a hat with a little built-in pocket pouch. Um, it's a Velcro closure, and you can't even tell when you're wearing it. Look at that. It no looks even so tell. good. Does that look amazing? So I've and got if your you need your ID, really pops. you can yeah. just stick your hand up mm -hmm. there, undo I'm the Velcro. Digging it. Well, your head's a little smaller than mine, though. Yeah, but there's adjustable. <laughs> there's I adjustable straps. I, di I didn't even ask if I could put your hat on. Hey, you know what? So I hope you don't hat. have lice, so then we're going to be <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna be good. You know, I hope I don't either, by, by golly. Well, <laughs> okay, so... Obviously, you had to have a lot of creativity go into it. And I know your logo is a kangaroo. Yes. So how did you get the idea for your logo, the colors, the designs you wanted to do? Kind of who helped you do that or how did you think of it? Yeah, so I actually had some help. And like with my, my classmates that year, we kind of brainstormed on the logo. Um, blue is one of my favorite colors, aside from pink, obviously, is my, my beautiful <laughs> pink hat right there. Um, but the reason I came up with a kangaroo is because I wanted some type of like icon to go with my brand. And... Like kangaroo has a pouch, my hat has a pouch. So. Secret pouch. Yes, so Very that's, smart. that's why I thought of a kangaroo. Very clever. No, I Thank love you. that. Um, okay, so I know I spoke with you a little bit earlier about who you work with to get the hats made, and you use some local people, correct? Yes. So kind of what's the process for the evolution of the hat, the life of the hat? Yeah, so it's a three-step process for me right now. So I get the blank hats from a company based in Atlanta, Georgia. They ship them to my house here. Um, then I drive them to a company in Fairborn, and they do the embroidery for me. But at first, when 
I this is actually a patented product now. So this I patented it um, or I found out it was patented last April, which is super super exciting awesome. because initially when I was doing this, I was nervous that somebody was going to take my idea and take advantage of a 19 year old college student mm-hmm. and also try to incorporate that into their products. So I worked with another group. Um, initially, um, my dance team coach from high school, Mary Lindoro, her family's company, FJM, and. Uh, this woman Diane Johnson she has been my like pocket expert so she's the one who created the first pocket to make sure I liked it and we tried around with different closures but we decided on velcro and the material is stretchy so you can fit more things into it Mm -hmm. so it is a three-step process so I go to the embroidery people they do my designs and then I go to my pocket people and then they do the pockets for me and then bring them to my retail stores and they're they're ready to go you know one of the things too about uh, about this was really interesting and the patent did you find anybody that was close to you in this hat um kind not well no no but <laughs> there's <laughs> there's other products out there that um there's like a zipper on the top of the head mm-hmm. so it's not the same as mine which is awesome because i personally again am biased but because it's not a zipper, I think that a zipper is uncomfortable on your head, yep. and yeah. Velcro isn't. Um, and also, my material is stretchy, so you can fit more things in ha- it because it has a little bit of give. Plus, these other p- products, I think there's another one, I don't know the name of it, um, but the top one with the zipper, like that would be on the top of your head, and I feel like that would be. Um, if you're running, more or, yeah. yeah. You don't want a zipper digging into your head. Okay, so we were talking about the patent. Was it difficult to get? How did you apply for it? So getting a patent is, it actually takes a long time to do. And I got extremely lucky. So um, when I was still in the class, actually, my professor was like, again, this is really unique. You got to pursue it. So I talked to my dad and I was like, dad, what do you think? He's like, yeah, let's, let's apply for a patent. So we did a provisional patent online and you have a year to decide if you want to actually file for a real one. Hmm. The only issue with that is it's extremely expensive to do that. And I was, again, 19 years old. Like, I don't know if this is actually something I want to do at this time. Mm -hmm. Um, So... My dad, one of my dad's network contacts uh, was a law firm out of Washington, D.C., and they actually had this program where you could apply for it and get a patent pro bono. So I made the cut. They decided to work with me, and I got the patent pro bono. They did so much amazing work, and I got the patent last April. So So it was fairly quick. Like start to finish, you started the patent process? Uh, September 2017. Yeah, and then you got approved. April 2018? Yeah. Last April? Yeah. Wait, no, no, no. 16. 2016. Okay. Was when I filed the provisional. Then the next September, 2017, we filed for the actual patent. That is really... So so it's basically two years, not even, which is insane. I have a patent in my desk that I paid $28,000 for um, that went nowhere. Um, So that's why I asked you if something was close. Because a lot of people that, like, think of things, there's people that are really close. Yeah. And I went down the path. I didn't realize how close somebody was. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. And then they had, like, they had, like, like deep, like, deep pockets. So they basically just jumped over the top of me. So I've got a really cool, expensive piece of paper <laughs> in my desk. Cool to say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so Danny, you are a soccer player, retired now. Yes, I'm retired. <laughs> but I, I would think that that would have an impact on your sales, on getting the word out. I mean, it's you kind of market it towards being able to run. Um, so was being a student athlete helpful in you know getting this the word out of the of the hat? I think it's it's twofold. That yes, it was it was awesome because I had um, so many contacts and networks within athletics, and they they knew who I was. I'm actually the president of all of our student athletes this year we have a group called student athletic advisory committee and congrats thank you it's it's been really cool to be able to organize different community service events and being able to give back to the dane community that supports us in our athletic events mm-hmm. so much um so through that yes but at the same time it made things really difficult being able to juggle soccer and school full-time course load and then also trying to run and expand my business it was difficult so i'd be traveling sometimes mm-hmm. or I don't get to come up with my schedule. Soccer is is number one. So, well, aside from school, but like mm-hmm. <laughs> soccer is is consumes your schedule and like that is your priority. So, mm-hmm. if I had to send an email or get a, an order ready, I had to be that much more ahead on of top the game. Of it. Yeah. Yes, which has been an amazing learning experience for me mm-hmm. to not only have that time management as a student athlete or just a college student, but also being like five steps ahead. Mm-hmm. So I don't because a few years ago for St. Patrick's Day. 
I was scrambling at the last second because I needed to have all these hats ready. But I waited till too late to get it done. Oh, no. It ended up working, but I had to do an extra amount of legwork after the fact and yeah. like running around campus and delivering them. Whereas I should have planned months in advance mm -hmm. so that when St. Patrick's Day hit, they could buy them that day at the table with me instead well, like, of me chasing them down. You know, I think what's interesting too, so you bring up the athlete. Like, I don't even mm -hmm. think you come up with this idea if you're not an athlete because you <laughs> solved a problem. Does yeah. that make mm -hmm. sense? Yeah. Um, which is which is really interesting. So when you think about just like coming up with like this, this idea, what is, um, did you always like kind of have a knack for just coming up with ideas and an entrepreneur spirit or that just, was it natural or was it like, was it an accident? Um, <laughs> I think, and like I touched on before, being the oldest of uh, four younger siblings, yes, I think I've always had a knack for entrepreneurship and like, again, like I also talked about my parents are very innovative and entrepreneurs themselves. So I was always running the lemonade stand or doing some type of sale or making those string bracelets or knitting <laughs> things. Like, <laughs> do I want to do fashion design? Like there's just always some type of creative thing or game or something I wanted to do with my siblings. And um, I guess bringing people together too. I love that. I love working with the team and having this product that when I walk around campus and I see my friends wearing it, Aww. it's so fun. Yeah. But when you see a random person wearing your product, you're like, that is so cool. Like They don't even know it's yeah. mine. Yeah, like, I, I don't even know them. They don't even know me, and they're wearing my hat, and it's that's so cool. cool. Well, Jeannie, one of our coworkers here, was like, I need to buy one for my son. So it's, and you don't know her son, but it's just <laughs> cool. Yeah. And where are you guys actually selling all these hats? So a bunch of different locations, actually. So mm -hmm. I have my e-commerce website, which I designed. Um, it's called myhandyhats.com. So if you order online, I'm able to ship them to you. And then um, I also am in a few different retail spots. I'm actually in six. So the Little Exchange in Oakwood, um, a spot yes. at the Dayton Mall called Monarch Market Affair. And then I'm at UD Arena, Bookstore, Fire Spirit, and then um, Alter High School, which is that my, is my high school. Those are some pretty good places to have placement at. <laughs> very, very cool. Thank you. So you say like even like entrepreneur degrees are becoming really popular today. You were aware of that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So what does that look like for like high school students? Um. I think it's so exciting because when I was a senior, there was an entrepreneurship class at Alter and I took it and I was like, this is really cool. I like the idea of running your own business or just coming up with an idea and forming your own team to make that happen. And I think it is so cool now that I'm a senior, I've had a lot of experience through the program and the student I was as an 18 year old coming into college is so different from the 22 year old me graduating in a month. And um, Actually, there was a future flyer pitch competition last night, and these students that are seniors in high school were invited out that submitted um, their new product ideas to solve a problem, and it was so cool. I talked to a lot of them, and I'm like, what are you doing next? They're like, I still don't know where I'm going to college. I'm like, well, let me tell you, if you're <laughs> interested and, and you like being creative and solving problems, then entrepreneurship is an amazing route to go. doesn't necessarily mean that you have to own your own business, but the types of thinking, it's a much more holistic approach and thinking of, you gotta think of the marketing, the accounting, the finances, the figuring out, it's a problem solving, figuring out what your customer wants and how mm -hmm. are you gonna target that? Even the simplest things like, when is the best time to post on Instagram? Mm -hmm. I mean, I personally know that on my personal account, it's yep. really good to post at like, what, nine o'clock on a Sunday? Yep. Yeah, but then- We were just talking about that. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, it's, it's, it matters and mm -hmm. like you get more engagement that way. So. If you're going to post something for a business, don't post it at 10 p.m. on a Saturday night. That's mm -hmm. not going to get any viewer engagement. Exactly. What's really cool about that is the fact that, like, you started this whole process in high school. Does that make sense? Yeah. You started an altar, right? And then, then you're in UD, and now you're a, a founder of this, like, really. And by the way, this is a good-looking hat. <laughs> this <is> not, <laughs> Thank you. Like, there's some cheesy ball caps, fair? Yes. I mean, th they're just. <laughs> hey, I want my customers to look good. I know. They, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's a really cool hat. I like it. And you recruit your friends to be your models. I do. Which is awesome. Yes. I have the cutest roommates and the, like so many fun friends at UD and my siblings, my parents have even been my, mm -hmm. my model. So it's fun to like have them be a part of Handy Hats because they were there the day that I pitched it to them saying, mm -hmm. is this a good idea? Like, this is kind of weird, but I'm going to try it. And they're like, yeah, like go for go it. Go for it. Yeah. So yeah, you 
if if you knew all my friends, you'd definitely <laughs> recognize that they're all over my website and in my picture. And your social media is awesome. Thank you. If you don't follow Danielle, her handy hats, Instagram, Facebook page, they're amazing. You have great updates. And <laughs> I want to be a model on it, so yeah, I well, have stay to. tuned. <laughs> stay tuned. We'll get Maple the Bassett to put a hat on. Oh, she wears hats. My dog wears hats. Okay. So cool. What's your favorite part <laughs> of being a, like a founder? I love just the process mm -hmm. and coming up with the initial like brainstorm idea. I get so excited and I sit there and I'm like, okay, how am I going to make this happen? So I put it in my GCAL. I'm a big GCAL girl. Figure out how I'm going to plan this. I immediately talk to my supply chain and figure out how to plan so that I can execute on whatever that project what's a, is. What's a GCAL? What is it's that? a Google Calendar. You guys probably use oh. like Outlook or... You know what that is. Got it. You have right. it on your phone. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's just a calendar and I like... Oh, gotcha. My whole life is just <laughs> on that GCAL. Same. That's cool. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So, what is next? I know you and I had a conversation about... Um, you're, you're still kind of undecided yes. for what's next, but what do you think is next for you and Handy Hats? So, um... I've been applying for jobs just as as I graduate here <laughs> in literally a month, which is crazy. Um, I'm thinking of doing something in like a merchandising, new product development type role. But Handy Hats is something I am so passionate about and I don't want to give it up. So I've been, like, I, like we talked about before, I tried out for Shark Tank two weeks ago. Yes. I don't know if I'm going to move on yet. I have to wait to hear from the producers um, if, if they liked me or not, which... Obviously, fingers crossed they did. Yeah. Um, but I've also been working towards Flyer Pitch, which was a competition that the University of Dayton hosts. It's actually an international competition. So there were teams from China and then obviously the U.S. who competed. And last night was actually the finals. Um, awards were given out, and I actually won the whole competition. You won quite a bit of money towards Handy I Hats. I did, and what I am. And what was the total amount? Twenty-five thousand dollars. Wow! Well, congratulations. <laughs> How like, cool! That's a big deal. And that happened last night. Yeah. So I, I, I honestly haven't processed it yet. Um, I am so so thankful for the opportunity. I don't know that there's many universities or programs out there that would host an international competition like that, where you can pitch a business idea and walk for at no cost and walk away with thousands of dollars and mm -hmm. and support resources towards continuing the, the, the business. So well, I think Dr. Spina, I mean, one is he, he's a rock star. Yes. Mm -hmm. He's mean, a he personal mentor of mine and I yeah. honestly can't speak any He's more a big of fan him. of you too. <laughs> yeah, he is. He's just, he, he's a good friend mm -hmm. and um, he's a real gift to our community. And the fact that he leans into the students there in such a big way. Uh, and you can see it. You can see it in his eyes. You can see it. You can see it on social media. Mm -hmm. uh, he posted about it. That's how I knew that she won yeah. because he had posted it. And I was just like, she's coming in today. I'm so excited <laughs> to talk about this with her. It's going to be very cool. So talk to me about uh, as we kind of like we're, we're, we're coming to the end of our show, but Shark Tank. Yes. Shark Tank. So what is like what does that process look like? Did you re reach out to them? Okay, so my dad actually mm -hmm. was, he was looking online, and a lot of people have told me, you got to try out for Shark Tank. And I was like, well, yeah, obviously, that sounds awesome, but, like, how do you do I that? I believe I was one of them that told you, you, you need did. to try out Shark Kenzie, Tank. Kenzie, you did. That was, yeah, you can have credit some credit. For that. Okay. It was Kenzie's idea. So, <laughs> so I said, Kenzie told me to be on Shark Tank, Dad. So, no, he, he was like, Danielle, there's this um, audition open casting call in Nashville. And this was, like, a week before the open casting. How long ago was that? I tried out two weeks ago, so like the week before that. So you that. won twenty five thousand dollars last night. Last night, <laughs> and then two weeks ago you were in Nashville doing an audition. For yes, Shark Tank. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. It's a pretty good spring. Yeah, yeah, it's keeping me busy for sure. Yeah. But I love being busy. So, um, anyways, my dad's like, "All right, you should go do this. What's to lose?" I'm like, "You're right." So, filled out this application, went in, had my pitch ready to go. Um, I got there at like five in the morning. And like American Idol, where everyone's waiting outside and like that huge line, it was like that. So I actually jumped a fence to get there because all these people were like running up to the front. And I was like, all right, bring it. Let's go. I am an athlete. I'm going to jump this yeah. fence. <laughs> so anyways, I get in line. They give you a wristband at a certain point. You go inside. They gave us the ground rules of what you do. So what I did is when it was my turn, I went up to a table, showed them my product, gave them my 60-second pitch. They asked me a few questions, and they said, Thank you for your application. We're going to take a look at this, and the producers will get back to you as soon as a few weeks. So that will be like the end of the month or not till September. So I just have to do a lot of waiting, 
and hope that they they saw my my items because there are a lot a lot of awesome ideas out there and people that are trying to be on the show as well Mm -hmm. so um this would be for season 11 and season 11 they don't start taping i don't think until september so then it Mm -hmm. wouldn't air until potentially next april right so it's like very far in advance so even if i do get on the show you may not see me for a whole year still that is the coolest thing i've heard so keep your fingers crossed like were you wearing the hat when you jumped the fence you have your hat on the whole (laughs) time i had it in my hand i'm gripping that thing (laughs) and just jumping the fence just you just take off yeah so (laughs) you you have like you have like a lot of courage Thank you. Uh, and um, I'm just really proud of you. What advice do you have for like for other young entrepreneurs? If you are passionate about something, absolutely go and do that. Um, no matter what, nobody can tell you that it's not a good idea. If you believe in it, that's all that really matters. And of course, you want to have mentors. And I have so many amazing mentors. Not only my parents, Vince Lewis, um, who's a, the advisor for entrepreneurship program, Dr. Spina, my friends, like so many people and an amazing support system. But if you believe in something, do it and do it well. Don't do a, a half half butt job at it. Like <laughs> literally do it mm-hmm. yeah. and, and go for it. No, I love that. Okay, so if people um, want to follow Handy Hats, where can they find you? What can they do to order their own? So you can, like we talked about before, my social media, mm-hmm. give me a follow at Insta- on Instagram at Handy Hats, mm-hmm. on Facebook, which is also Handy Hats. And then my website is myhandyhats.com. So if you're not trying to go into the retail store, I have more selection online. So definitely check out what I have to offer. And I also do custom orders too. So for example, if your team, your company, your family reunion, you want hats, I can I can work with you to make something really special. So if we wanted to get some like McGowan Braybender handy hats, we could do that. I'm all about it. But hey, by the Ooh. way, like like, <laughs> like your your real stuff is in here. Yeah, like she did it as an example. Yeah, yeah I, I would like my ID back. I yeah, probably need exactly. that. Like this is really your hat. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. yes. 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 Okay. It so, is. Sorry for putting your hat on. Okay, it's all but, good. Uh, Hey, thanks for leaning into life the way that you do. And thanks for showing others that it's possible. Uh, and um, super, just a big shout out to your parents, too, for just raising just an incredible young woman. They are uh, the best. You have younger uh, siblings, so you're blazing the path for, for them. And you're mm-hmm. telling them that that's okay, mm-hmm. that, you can, that you can have courage and lean into life and just take big, big, big uh, chances so um thank you very very much and thank you both for having me it's been awesome talking to you guys of course we're so excited we have a little entrepreneur a budding businesswoman as i like to say (laughs) absolutely and if you have any questions for me you can email me at scott at healthierbirthdays.com or kenzie at healthierbirthdays.com and join us next time on side effects daniel have a great day yep thank you keep doing what you're doing and kenzie and i will talk to you guys soon thank you